Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and today we'll be taking the Jellifier sketchovers from last week and detailing the 3D model further. So let's get started. Starting off, I updated all of the orthographic and perspective views with the new sketches. The advantage of overlaying the sketches like this is that you can easily see what needs fixing and updating. There are a few new additions, like the cute little fish pendant and the gun handle especially. If you don't remember, I had to leave this area blank as I had no clear read of it in the sketches. Omerjan has luckily filled in the blanks and made sure I understood the full design. So as a first step, I started cutting out the shapes to update the sextant bit using the boolean modifier method. I have plans of creating a quick tip video on how I use booleans in Blender, so if you're interested in learning more about that, make sure to keep an eye out for that in the near future. Next, I started fixing the holes in the reel and updated the cable running through the arrow to the reel. Funny enough, this didn't actually quite click in my brain when I was working on the first base model, but Obviously, the cable has to be connected to the arrow and the reel in order to work. Good thing Omerjan caught my silly little mistake and made me realize that this wasn't quite right. And thanks to the editability of the JMesh add-on cable, I could easily fix this. So this part was pretty interesting because I was using a boolean shape to cut out rectangle holes along the handle, but I also used a cylindrical boolean shape to cut out yet another shape on the boolean itself. And as you can see, this method saves me just a ton of time because manually modeling all of this would just not be fun. I did run into some issues of the boolean rectangles not really showing up properly, like some of them just created holes and some just weren't there, but all I had to do later in the process was remesh the entire handle and reapply the boolean. like Omerjan's additions, they've given the gun a lot more personality in my opinion. Adding in smaller details like bolts, cut lines, bandages, etc. really brings the concept to life. I also really appreciate the callout sketches as they came in really handy later on when I was fleshing out the smaller mechanisms of the gun, like that whole trigger area for example. The handle itself was a real pain and I think having completed the mesh now I probably would have approached it a bit differently if I could do it all over again. I think I would have modeled it manually instead of relying on my SVG to mesh method mainly because I ended up with geometry that was quite difficult to work with in terms of volume. So that's just an example of how you learn by just doing the work, <laughs> eventually find out what works and what doesn't work. This video was especially a tough one for me. I'm used to doing more surface level modeling purely for illustrative purposes, so properly detailing hard surface objects, oh man, did it fry my brain. I actually had to split the work over several days as it was taking a lot out of me mentally. I think this is pretty normal when you're learning a new skill. Nothing is easy in the beginning stages, but you just need to keep practicing. I know it's a cliche, but learning a new creative skill is like training at the gym. You don't go in and expect to lift 30 kilo dumbbells like it's nothing. You have to start with light weights and the more you practice, the more you're able to lift. I think 
the most difficult part for me was knowing how to be efficient with my polygon distribution. I've never been shown a proper way of being mindful with my poly counts, so over the course of the video you'll see the poly count drastically increase. And it probably could have been kept much lower, especially towards the end where I found out you actually don't have to put a subdivision level on every low poly object in order to make it smooth. You can simply add in edge loops around the edges and just toggle smooth shading. <laughs> Still learning, you know? But hey, maybe through these videos you can learn from my silly little mistakes. Using a mirror modifier, I was able to decrease half of the workload on, for example, the bolts. Since they'd be in the same place on the other side, I wouldn't have to worry too much about the back side. I definitely recommend using the mirror modifier as often as possible to save yourself just a lot of work. For these clasps, I decided to pull it out and model it in orthographic view as the perspective view is making it difficult to align things properly. And once I was done, I merged the shapes and kept a copy of it just floating, just in case I wanted to add them to several areas on the mesh. At this stage, I started adding in edge loops to some of the rougher shaped low poly models and changed their mode to smooth shading. And this alone makes the model look a lot more polished and high poly. I'd advise for you to wait with this type of detailing until later on in the process, because when you add in these edge loops, this will increase the poly count, although not drastically, but if you have an old computer like me, keeping the poly count low for as long as possible is pretty crucial. Something I actually had to choose between during this phase of the project was whether or not it would be more time efficient to model something manually, or if I could just use a displacement modifier to get some really nice details. On the nozzle and on the side bit of the handle, I actually decided to use this grid texture as a displacement map, as this would just save me a ton of time. Plus, with displacement maps, the edges will actually reflect lighting, so these maps are a really handy tool for creating details quickly without modifying the original shape of the model, which again reduces your poly count, so that's always a good thing. During this phase I actually learned something new. I learned that you can align an object to a surface using the magnet tool at the top. This made attaching all of these bolts to the base just so much easier. It saved me from having to manually rotate all of the bolts in perspective. Thank God for this feature. At this stage, I had most of the shapes fleshed out and updated, so I started with making everything seem a bit more high poly, just making sure no low poly parts would show up in the final render. I also added in some beveled edges for added detail. There's this new feature in Blender 2.8 called Custom Profiles, which is the setting at the very bottom when you choose to bevel an edge. This custom profile allows you to manipulate the geometry and create custom beveled edges, which is so cool. I'll link one of JNM's tutorials explaining this in the description.
Hopefully you're able to catch what I'm doing even though this video is sped up by like 20 times. If I were to slow these down, I, these short YouTube videos would just last ages. Because I'm such a newbie when it comes to 3D modeling, especially in Blender, I spend a lot of time working and a lot of that time goes to just cleaning up the mesh or reworking parts that could have been made better. Hopefully in the future I'll be much more efficient and can slow down the videos to properly show you guys what I'm doing. Omar John and I have actually entertained the idea of doing live streams in order to show the process of things, but we both struggle to work and talk at the same time, so that would be something we just have to practice. In this part of the process, all of the shapes were done so I could finally start overlapping some cloth or tape over the cables, handles, etc. The method I used is a modifier called shrink wrap, which allows you to take a mesh and wrap it or surface project it over another mesh. So this is pretty handy for bandages, tight clothing, gloves, socks and so on. The nice thing about the modifier is the fact that it keeps everything editable, so you can keep changing the mesh around, copying it to another part of the attached mesh. That also means that you can edit the mesh underneath and the bandage would conform to the mesh automatically without you having to do anything. Obviously, as you can see in my mesh, since the handle is such an intricate shape, the bandage wouldn't wrap around perfectly. So I had to manually go in and edit the shape after merging down the modifier. I wasn't very happy with the sharpness of the arrow and Omerjan actually commented on this as well. So I spent a bit of time reworking the shape using the Boolean method to cut out some really nice and sharp edges and then copied it around to complete it fully. point I was done with the mesh so all I needed to do now was just overlay some basic materials for the gun and add in an HDRI for some nice lighting and color information. I didn't want to go too detailed during this stage because Omerjan is going to paint over the model and I want to give him as much creative freedom as possible. As a final step, using emission shaders, I saved out a copy of the file and added different colors to the different parts. These will work as masks in Photoshop, and if you're unfamiliar with this method, basically it allows you to select a part of the mesh, for example the scope, and work within the confines of just the scope, so you can paint freely without worrying about the paint spilling onto the other parts of the mesh. It's just a way to speed up paint overs basically, but it's such a time saver and just very helpful. So here's the final render. I actually think it turned out pretty cool and I'm just, oh, I'm so excited to just see the final product after Omijan is done painting over it. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. As mentioned in part two, I will be sculpting the alien jellyfish as well, but I'll release that as a bonus video after the fifth part is out. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to come back next week to see Omar John's paint over. Bye.